we're not generally talking about a one-off, frightening, traumatic experience. What we're talking about is repeated, ongoing abuse. Our experiences shape who we are. So if you've had um, lived in a family, for example, where your parents don't get out of bed because they're drunk or because they're, they're high on drugs or, or even that your, your parent has died, um, that will affect the way you build relationships with adults. I think t all teachers need training to know how to deal with looked after children. A looked after child means that somebody that is looked after by the local authority, either voluntarily or via a court order. Looked after children, nationally, academically, are less likely to achieve than their peers. They're more likely to be excluded from school, leave school with fewer qualifications and less likely to go on to higher education. Issues can often occur within school when looked after children feel that the teachers don't understand their past life experiences or, or understand what they've gone through. It can often lead to teachers kind of dealing with the situation in a way that leaves a looked after child feeling kind of negative and, 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 and unhappy and, and angry at times also. The teacher excluded me from watching a film because she thought the content might upset me. Um, she told me this in front of the whole class and then she asked me to leave. I felt really ashamed and everyone knew why. Yeah, I, I strongly believe that all teachers should know if they've looked after children in their class. I think it's important because then they can react to them in an appropriate manner. I think the teachers should have knowledge of if the child's in care or something because it's always good to know. But it's whether they broadcast that. They, if they know about it, it should be confidential. And the confidentiality part is crucial for a looked after child. They don't mind teachers knowing that they are looked after. What they do mind is them using that or letting other children know. They want to be judged the same as their peers. They don't want anyone to, to differentiate just because they're looked after. So that means treating them the same as everybody else, but understanding they are different. They have different needs and therefore reacting to those needs. I think it's crucial that the teachers empathise with looked after children, that they understand that some of their behaviour is because of what's happened in the past. So there are several different points that teachers need to be aware of. I don't want other people to know I'm in care unless I choose to tell them. I lived in a residential home and I had to catch a taxi to school every day. But the one time my taxi was late so I got to school after the bell. And then my teacher started having a go at me, started getting angry and giving me a detention. And I tried explaining it weren't my fault and my taxi turned up late, which just didn't listen to me. I miss school trips because it takes me longer to get the forms signed. I want to be treated like everyone else, but sometimes I do need help. I think the teachers should take the time to find out what we need and what we want. Teachers have issues dealing with looked after children in the classroom because of their perceived issues with disruption in school. However, there are many reasons for this behaviour. Many looked after children didn't start with having good, secure relationships with their parents. When they were disciplined, it was often done so with anger, abuse, humiliation. The children were full of shame, but none of the adults helped them to manage that sense of shame. What it actually does, it starts to become part of their identity, part of who they see themselves as. They start to think, I am a shameful person. And these children switch off or cut off from the emotion as a way of dealing with the intensity of it. It maybe looks like they're not concentrating. <sighs> this is so boring. Summer, can we concentrate on the work, please? Why? What's the point? Put the phone away, this is a test. Could you do this bit, the brackets bit? Summer, can you do your own work, please? I don't know it. It's boring anyway. If you need help, ask for it. I don't need help. I need you off my back. Don't raise your voice at me. I wasn't. Right, that's it. Come on. What are you kicking me out for? I ain't done anything. You shouldn't pull them out of the class. 
So, because they might feel like everybody's kind of looking. They're not able to regulate their emotions. They're entirely dependent on the adults around them to do that for them. I really don't need you disrupting lessons today. And you're having a massive go at me, embarrassing me in front of the whole class, telling everyone I'm thin. Look, just take it down a notch, OK? I've got a whole class to teach, not just you. Because of children's past experiences, they don't trust um, who they perceive to be authority figures. These children are going to have difficulty in managing all emotions. What we see is very sort of explosive behaviour. What they often then do is respond with blame and rage towards the person or the thing that they see as a source of that shame. In the heat of the moment, the looked after child doesn't see the teacher standing there. They see their abuser. Confrontation, shouting or any aggressive behaviour means the same thing to them. It takes them back to when they were a terrified, helpless child. You're such a scared man, you don't know anything about me. I speak to the headmaster about this and I'll have you sent home. For the last three weeks now, you've been sat at the back of that classroom every single day making my job an absolute misery. Just Do you realise I'm in here five school. days a week we working... You know what's hard. going on at work, I just can't yes, cope with this. It's like you, and there you are at the back of the classroom... Every a letter or something you're supposed to have brought home. Do you know what's going on at work at the moment? How am I supposed to look after you when you're not even doing the stupid basic things you're supposed to be doing? What school can do is school can offer a place where that is reliable, where adults are seen to be reliable, empathic, caring, consistent and bounded in a way that they can provide a world for the looked after child which is safe, is structured and where they feel valued. I think you should deal with it like maybe after lesson or when like one to one so they feel that you're listening to them and they've got your full attention. Maybe the child could open up if they feel that they trust the teacher, then that will help improve the relationship between teacher and student. Oh, someone... What did I do? Well, actually, you did some really good work today. If you ever need any help with your work or you just need someone to talk to, the door's always open. Once children feel as if they've been emotionally met, then they're, they're much less likely to act out the difficult feelings. When the teacher took the time to get to know me, I felt really comfortable in the class, and that helped me to learn. The more you use a certain part of your brain, the more strongly that part of your brain develops. So for children who have been in these really difficult, abusive, traumatic situations, what's happened is the bit of the brain that functions like the alarm system, so it's on the lookout for threat and danger, that part of their brain has been repeatedly activated over and over again. It's almost like that stress response gets switched on and then they can't turn it off. They're always looking out for danger, always scanning everybody and everything in their environment. Their ability to kind of see people in a social capacity is reduced because they're so busy kind of thinking, is this person a threat? These children are always very on edge and ready to have to respond to a threat because all the time they're scanning around thinking, is there a threat here? Am I safe? And I guess a lot of the kind of things that happen in school, you know, could potentially trigger difficulties for children. You know, a lot, there's lots of hustle and bustle, there's lots of sounds, lots of noises, lots of things changing, bells ringing. A large number of looked after children will display um, traits of aggression and will engage in uh, underage drinking and smoking. We know that around 50% of looked after children are regular smokers, many of them starting at the age of around 11. Luckily, the schemes um, like Dudley Kikash that can help overcome this problem. Um, but obviously, the, the biggest push really has to come from the support and education that's given by carers and those working in schools. It's hard for us growing up as young people because our parents never taught us right from wrong. So, and when they got angry, they used to fight and argue and the drink and the smoke and... The sort of explosive reaction you get to overwhelming emotion is actually a normal process. It's something that we all do 
when our feelings get too much for us. But the difference for looked after children is that they tend to get to that point much, much quicker. Looked after children can believe they're under attack. They mentally prepare themselves for battle, armoring themselves against any perceived threat. Please, don't hurt me. Cassie, no, what are you doing? For goodness sake! I guess it's about being aware that this might be difficulty for some of these children and really trying to help them create a sense of safety as much as possible. Look, some looked after children have grown up with extreme violent behaviour. That's just the way it is. But now it's up to their carer, both at home and at school, to change their perception of what an adult is. And this is Say What, the show that challenges the experts to see if they really know what they're talking about. And as a special treat, I've got a co-host. Big hand, please, for Anna! I already did that. This week, we're looking at foster children in education. You mean looked after children? Thank you. We're squaring off two teachers against two... Fostered after children. Lax. We'll say who knows more about children in care and the issues they face in school. Will they get it right or will they say what? So let's meet the contestants. For representing the teachers, we have a delightful young lady. What's your name? Jessica Brindley. And I must say, if you were my teacher, I'd be paying attention in class. Derringer. Are you single? Who's our next contestant, Dan? What's your name? Uh, Bob. Well done. Who have you got, kid? Representing the looked after children, Doug and Lindsay. Aren't they adorable? Right, first up, the quick fire question round. We'll give you a phrase relevant to lax, and you tell us what it means. If you know the answer, touch my face. <laughs> right then, let's get caressing. What's a social worker? A professional committed to the pursuit of social welfare and justice. Correct. That was an easy one. What do we mean when we say contact? Is it something to do with personal safety? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Contact is when Lax have pre-arranged meeting with their birth parents. For a bonus point, could you tell me why this is important to be aware of? Well, meeting their parents could be quite upsetting for the child, which could affect them in school. That's correct. Cool. Next phrase. Respite. Jessica, again, you are loving touching that face. Yes, Lindsay, we're looking for respite. Respite is where lacks take a break from their foster homes and go stay somewhere else, either another foster home or a residential unit. Why could this affect the child at school? Lindsay, again. You can end up further away from school, so travelling can take a lot longer, and also it's harder to get to school on time. Wiki and Pedia over there. Let's move on to the next round. This is the scenario round. Here, Here we present you with common issues affecting lax at school, and that's the best way to resolve it. So, hands on buzzers. First scenario. A lack has misbehaved. You've given them a detention straight after school. The lack is upset because they might miss their pre-arranged taxi. What do you do? Don't ever give us detention. <laughs> nice try, kid. The child has to be disciplined. They should stay in the detention and learn that bad behaviour will not be tolerated, whatever their background. Bit Victorian, but I like it. Any other answers? Well, I'd have to disagree with Bob. Um, I do think it's important that discipline is upheld, 
but in certain situations it's better to compromise. If the child misses the taxi then there's going to be added costs and extra effort to rearrange, plus the carer is going to be concerned. I would give advance notice of the detention to the student and the carer for say the next day. That way arrangements can be made. Great answer. Two points to the teachers. Oi, you drawing on my face? No. Second question. The school photo is coming up and you need to send out permission slips. How long in advance should you send the permission slips to the lax student? Anyone? A week. It could take up to two weeks. Do you know what this is? What are you doing? It won't come off. Did you use permanent mark here, little... Lindsay, why well, might it take longer for some lax students to return their permission slips? Because unlike parents and some foster carers who just sign the forms, some have to get their signed by their social worker, who all have busy workloads. Good answer. On to our final round. Yes, the final round of Say What? Both teams are tied on equal points, with everything to play for and everything to lose. So let's play Sudden Death. <laughs> I believe in you. OK, to win, answer this question. When asked what was most important in teacher-lack relationships, what did both groups agree on? Gonna have to rush you. Lindsay! Come on, what's the answer? I'm not sure. If you're not sure, you don't press the buzzer, do you? If you don't answer, you lose. Well, I think we should stand together, work together, and most importantly, be there for one another. Is that about right, Lindsay? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> what are you doing? Get back there. No one's won yet. I think we're all winners here. Congratulations, guys. Hang on a minute. This is my game and this is not how we play it. Thanks for watching. Oi, oi, hey, this is a competition, not a buggy. Somebody's got to be the loser. You've got that covered. <laughs>